Germans coming here? Oh, well, just oh. for a couple of days, Major. I, I, I don't care much for Germans. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Faulty Towers moments. That's puke, that is. Well, at least it's fresh puke. <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> well, he said it. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're counting down the best moments from this greatest of British sitcoms. Let us know what your favourite Faulty Towers episode is in the comments. Number 10. Inspectors. Fear not, kind sir, it matters not one whit. Beg your pardon? <laughs> it matters not one whit. Time is not pressing on me, fortunately. Sybil's heard rumours that there's a gang of hotel inspectors stalking the streets of Torquay, and Basil decides two standout guests deserve his particular attention. Both strange and demanding in their own ways, Basil bends over backwards to try and give them a pleasant stay. I assume that all the vegetables within the omelette are fresh. Oh, yes, yes. Including the peas. Oh, yes, they're fresh, all right. Yeah, they're not frozen, are they? Uh, well, they're frozen, yes. Oh, I see, well, if they're frozen, they're not fresh, are they? Well, I assure you, they were absolutely fresh when they were frozen. Oh, dear. <laughs> of course, it doesn't work. Not only because Basil is incapable of being polite to anybody, but because of a series of errors in the dining room. First, there's a mix-up with the Spanish omelette. Then, a bottle of expensive wine has gone bad, and it ends with Basil choking one of them out. And in the end, we find out they weren't the inspectors at all. Well, here's the punchline. <laughs> now, I'm going to fetch my belongings, and I do not expect to receive a bill. <gasps> You've handled that then, have you, Basil? <laughs> Number nine. How often do you manage it? Uh, Dr. Abbott, actually. I'm sorry? Dr. Abbott. Two doctors. You're two doctors? Yes. Well, how did you become two doctors? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most unusual. I mean, did you take the exam twice? Or... <laughs> no, my wife's a doctor. The doctors Abbott come to stay, and that's all well and good until Basil finds out that they're both psychiatrists. Don't do this. I'm not nervous. I'm just saying take it easy, all right? All of us, just take it easy, right? It's got Nothing's got into it. I'm just saying take it easy. I'm going to say take it easy without starting a panic. I mean, what is going on here? Terrified they're going to take it upon themselves to psychoanalyze him and his many, many foibles, the situation is rife for misunderstandings. The doctors are curious about how hoteliers like the Faulties manage to get away on holiday, but Basil doesn't hear the first part of the question. Hmm? How often do you manage it? <laughs> how often can you and your wife manage it? <laughs> he assumes they're asking about an entirely different topic and gets more than a little offended at their speculating Basil and Sybil can only manage it once a year or so. Well, as you've asked, two or three times a week, actually. <laughs> a week? Yes, pretty normal, isn't it? We're quite normal down here in Torquay, you know. <laughs> Number eight, anniversary. It's Basil and Sybil's wedding anniversary, and Basil being Basil, Sybil immediately assumes he's forgotten, not helped by his plan to give her a surprise party, which means he's pretending he doesn't remember. Sybil! Sybil! She's so enraged that she disappears, leading to more farcical situations as, to avoid embarrassing the Faulties in front of their friends, Basil bribes Polly into doing a very poor impression of Sybil, who he claims has been taken ill. This is all your fault! My fault! You said to say she was ill! You were the one who invited them to come up here, they didn't even want to! As usual, they can't get their story straight, and Basil even tries to fake a heart attack at one point. Hello, Sybil! Oh, yeah, oh, there's, there's something there. I don't see it moving. It's a bit dark, Basil. Yes, well, her eyes are very sensitive. Sybil returns, however, just when Basil thinks he's finally got her to leave him for good. Number seven, health inspector. If everything's above board, you have nothing to fear from a health inspection. Tell me, this kitchen is filthy. Filthy towers, eh? <laughs> now, look, look, all kitchens are filthy, Mr. Faulty. In fact, the better the kitchen, the filthier it is. However, nothing is above board in this hotel, which means the inspector's arrival chills Basil to his core. Terry's not remotely bothered by the state of the kitchen, but it's all hands on deck for everybody else. Well, of course it's a rat. You have rats in Spain, don't you? Or did Franco have them all shot? This <laughs> <laughs> stuff, it's a rat! Then it turns out that Manuel has a pet rat in his bedroom that Basil wants to get rid of, much to Manuel's upset. You've got a lot on your mind. We didn't want to worry him. What do you mean, um... 
A public health inspector coming after a 24 hour warning and a rat loose in the hotel is it? Obviously, the rat escapes and they are left trying to catch it without the inspector seeing while also trying not to serve the guests poisoned meat. What do you mean you picked them all up? Well, Manuel knocked them over, we picked them all up. Oh my God, what's the matter? <laughs> One of them's got rat poison on it. <laughs> Number six, hanky pankying. Basil's uptight English sensibilities can't withstand the arrival of a wedding party in the hotel. A young, unmarried couple want a room with a double bed, and Basil will do everything to prevent that from happening. Jean Wilson, is this you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, what's going on here? No. <laughs> well, I can't give you a double room, then. Oh, Lord. It's I'm... against the law. What law? The law of England. Worse, an older couple later arrives, and Basil witnesses both the younger women and Polly apparently up to no good with him, and uselessly attempts to cover up the supposed affairs. Electric razor, huh? Right. Well, that's what I was referring to when I said it was disgusting. It is, of course, disgusting that you haven't shaved. But I understand. Well, I mean, sometimes I don't shave either, and that's disgusting too. So I <laughs> He's also got a French antiques dealer prowling around the hotel, trying to lure him into bed, while he still can't stand to be around his own wife. Though, as usual, Sybil's the one who knows the truth and could have cleared it up for him if he'd only asked. What girl? That, that girl! She's his daughter. What? <laughs> She's Mr. Lloyd's stepdaughter. They're all one family. Number five, dead body. It's every hotelier's worst nightmare. A guest dies while staying the night. Basil makes the grim discovery while delivering breakfast in bed, though he initially just assumes the guest is being rude. Well, enjoy your breakfast. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. <laughs> Oh, not at all. Thank you for mentioning it. He then assumes that the breakfast kippers were the things that did him in, though the doctor says he's been dead for ten hours. What is it, Polly? He's dead. Dead? Who? Number eight. <laughs> Lehman? But Basil just took him his breakfast. He's cold. Oh, no. But it doesn't stop there. They've also got to get the body out of the hotel without any of the other guests noticing, which certainly doesn't go to plan. All clear! All clear! Good morning, Manuel. Oh, good morning. <laughs> Another guest collapses, and they mistakenly stash the body in a room that's being used, leading to even more chaos. Murder! Stop her! Murder! Oh, spiffing. Absolutely spiffing. Well done. Two dead, 25 to go. <laughs> Number four, room with a view. Of all the guests at the hotel, perhaps Mrs. Richards is the most notorious and the one Basil likes the least, which is certainly saying something. I've reserved a very quiet room with a bath and a sea view. I specifically asked for a sea view in my written confirmation, so please make sure I have it. Okay. <laughs> right away, she manages to get on Polly's nerves with her very specific requirements for a room who leaves Manuel to deal with her. I'm not paying £7.20 per night plus VAT for a room without there a bath. Where is your bath? You call that a bath? It's not big enough to drown a mouse. It's disgraceful. I wish you were a mouse, aren't you? <laughs> she wants a bath, but the bath isn't good enough. She wants a view, but she doesn't like Torquay. And she wants Basil to fix the broken radio, which isn't actually broken at all. I expect to be able to see the sea. You can see the sea. It's over there between the land and the sky. <laughs> I need a telescope to see that. Well, may I suggest that you consider moving to a hotel closer to the sea? She's also going deaf, but refuses to switch on her hearing aid. Even Sybil, who's usually far better with the guests, doesn't know what to do with her. Number three, Waldorf Salad. An American and his British wife rock up at the hotel for a taste of the English Riviera but are difficult to please from the beginning. Yes, but, uh, but the shift does actually stop at nine. Now, now, hmm. so why does your chef stop at nine, huh? You got something terminal? <laughs> no, no, but that's when he, in fact, stopped. The husband demands that Basil keep the kitchen open past closing so that they can have a hot meal. But Basil's pride gets the better of him and he refuses to pay the chef enough overtime for him to stay. What the hell's going on here? It says hotel outside. Now, is this a hotel or isn't it? 
Well, within reason. He baffles Basil with his bougie order, however, asking for a pair of screwdrivers and a Waldorf salad. Basil gets it wrong, of course, and angers the bad-tempered American even more, even when Sybil serves the perfect Waldorf salad. Number 2. A Damn Good Thrashing One of the most legendary moments in British television history, Basil's knackered mortar has finally given up on him. Put the bottle down. What is it? Cat is drunk. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Drunk. Almost unconscious. The many problems peak in this episode where Basil has to put up with not just the car, but a rude child in the dining room upper-class guests he isn't used to, and a chef who can't handle his drink and has fallen in love with Manuel. <laughs> Manuel, he doesn't love me! Well, well, you have to give these things time. I want Manuel! Basil needs to drive to another restaurant to get a duck to serve their fancy guests, but the car has other ideas and finally packs in. Yet again, Basil loses his temper, taking a stick outside and beating the broken car for ruining his gourmet night. What about the duck, Forte? <laughs> Ducks off, sorry. Number one, don't mention the war. It could never be anything else. Oh, we weren't expecting you. Oh, uh, weren't you? The Germans, don't mention the war. I see. <laughs> The hotel gets some German guests, and Basil can't handle it, despite the Second World War having ended more than 30 years prior. He orders everybody not to risk offending the Germans by mentioning the war. Meanwhile, he can't resist, thanks to a head injury he sustained earlier in the episode. Oh, prawn! That was it. When you said prawn, I thought you said war. Oh, oh the war! Oh, yes, completely slipped my mind. Yes, I've forgotten all about it. He ends up massively offending them with his impression of Hitler and non-stop jokes about the Third Reich, and slates the guests for their lacking a sense of humour. Will you stop talking about the war? Me? You started it? We did not start it. Yes, you did. You invaded Poland. <laughs> Funnily enough, when this episode did air in Germany, the real-life Germans famously found it hilarious. I'll do that for any more. Oh. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.